Hello and welcome to Twin Tigers Data. My name is Thomas Kister and let's get started. Today we'll be talking about the grand and fabulous clerics. Who are they? Well, they're the professors of their God's words. Now, mind you, there are more. Yes, there is more than one God. It is not like our world where actually, yeah, it's pretty much like our world. Everybody believes that their gods are right. There are some groups that believe that there's only one God. There's some groups that believe that there are multiple gods. And then there are some people that are just like, what is a God? Now, these are devout believers, and I mean so devout that they will spend months just reading one book. All about the history and the fights that one hero had in their world. And these are warriors of their gods to make mostly make other people f follow their beliefs, really. What can they do? Well, they can make, they can wear light armor, medium armor, uh, use shield, and use shields, they can wield simple weapons, they can cast divine spells. However, they can, now with this class, unlike the bard, who is limited to a certain list of spells, these guys have access to any and all spell lists that you can find. Whether you you find uh, Xanathar's Guide to Everything, uh, the Elemental Evil Player's Companion, or the uh, Player's Handbook. If you're using all of these for druid spells, you can only prepare an amount equal to your Wisdom modifier plus your character level. So, for example, if you have a 15 uh wisdom then you can only prepare three spells per day i'll get into the reason why you can only prepare three spells in another video now you have an ability called channel divinity which also is le linking into what are called your uh domains now the channel divinity that you get as a base cleric is called repel undead and essentially yet yeah, sorry it's called turn undead however you essentially at the very beginning repel undead and eventually you're able to destroy undead up to i believe around cr4 it starts off with like one quarter and then goes up to four and then once per rest eventually you can ask your deity to use a cleric spell or one of the cleric abilities that you have available to you to intervene in the current actions that are going on. If it's successful, you can't use it again for another seven days. Now, in order to use it, you have to roll, uh, I believe, a d20 and roll lower than your uh, level plus your wisdom modifier, I believe. If it's not, I'm sorry for lying to you on that part. First up, the Knowledge Domain. Now, you can learn an additional two languages, gain two skills, sorry, and have two of your skins gain double your proficiency as you have become more knowledgeable in them. Your Channel Divinity ability gives you knowledge in one skill that you don't already have proficiency in, or one tool I item for example the uh thieves tools that you originally did not have uh proficiency with you're now proficient with them for a total of 10 minutes or you can use your channel divinity ability which is severely limited on how many times you can use it uh to read a creature's thoughts and command them you can add your Wisdom modifier eventually to all your damaging cantrips. So, stuff like a healing cantrip, you can't add your Wisdom modifier to. However, if you're casting, say, a spell that you somehow got called Toll the Dead, I believe wiz uh, clerics are unable to cast this. I'll have to check. If you did have access to this, you can add your Wisdom modifier to add additional damage. Now, you can also, at towards the high tier levels, 
meditate in a single spot in a location or holding a very specific object and learn its exact history. So you can learn why exactly a place is not being used when it clearly has plenty. Say you're in a dwarven mine and there's plenty of gold and jewels to be mined out of this place. But there are no dwarves. You can meditate and figure out that long ago, a gold dragon had uh, infested this uh, cavern system and has left for a few weeks and is going to be and should be coming back at any moment to eliminate any and all who are stuck in its in this cavern. The life domain. Just so then you're a little bit harder. They decided to give you the ability to wear heavy armor. Now, when you give a creature creature some health points, you heal them for an additional two plus the spell spells level. For example, if you're casting a ninth level uh, cure light wounds, you gain you are healing them for an additional eleven hit points. Now, once per day, you can heal them for maximum HP possible. I believe it's once. It could be more. Now, you can also regain health when you heal someone else. However, it's only for the amount uh, of HP equal to the spell's level. You can deal radiant damage to an enemy that you are striking. And also, when you heal and also your channel divinity spell allows you to heal someone up to half their HP or five times your cleric level. If you if your cleric level is not high enough to heal them up to half. The light domain. This gives you guess what? The light cantrip. You can cause disadvantage on attacks against you or an attack or attacking another uh, enemy or ally. Now you can add your wis once again you can add your wisdom modifier to your damaging cantrips. You essentially become a human light bulb that ca causes disadvantage on all spells that deal fire damage or radiant damage. Now involving this, you can also. Uh, homebrew this rule, which I completely implore you to do, because since it gives uh, disadvantage on all spells dealing fire and radiant damage due to enemies, you could, if given the fact, given the instance that your players are not under dark and also are wearing, say, welding goggles at the time, you could give them advantage to move out of the way of fire and radiant spells. For example, create bonfire, which requires the enemy to make a dexterity save. If they are fitting that description, you can instantly say, oh yeah, you get advantage on that. I mean, it's completely usable and also kind of makes sense as in all reality, to me at least. Now, you can channel divinity, dispel all magic, magical darkness, and also all cr enemies that are not totally covered might take radiant damage given they fail their save. Fail their saves. The nature domain. This one specifically gives you a druid cantrip. And also, you gain proficiency in heavy armor along with one out of three different skills. I believe, do not quote me on this, that it is animal handling, nature, and survival. I could be wrong, however, that without the book being right in front of me, it that does sound like those are the three. Now, you can give yourself or an ally resistance to all acid, fire, cold, lightning, or thundering damage. However, this resistance only lasts on 
one hit that the character is immediately facing. So if your barbarian is the only one standing and you know that all of your ally characters are about to be knocked unconscious anyways, but the barbarian is still going to live, you can use, and it's say a red dragon and you haven't used your reaction yet, you can use your reaction now to give you the barbarian resistance against its fire breath to let it last a few more rounds before he probably kills it or he gets killed himself, depending on how far along you've been striking at it. Now, you can also deal fire, cold, or lightning damage to an enemy. As a channel divinity ability, you can charm animals or plants for one minute, and like I said inside my previous video on bards, or until something that usually drops a charm happens. For example, they get hit by an ally, or they get hit by uh, an enemy, or they do. you tell them to do something that they cannot do. For example, commit suicide. This is not the ability like a death note. You cannot tell the character, sorry, you cannot tell an NPC to commit suicide. Sorry, guys who love death note. I had to say it for you. Yeah. Now, eventually, instead of charming them, you can completely command them, which I believe gets you closer to being able to commit suicide. Either that or you do allow the, it allows you to command them to commit suicide. Tempest. Let me get one thing straight here. Tempest is not uh, fighting. Tempest is like Thor when he lost his lost Mjolnir and he got and he got little sparks coming off of his fingers. So essentially this is thunder and lightning. You gain proficiency with martial weapons and heavy armor. Essentially you can thunderously rebuke 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 enemies. And also, when dealing lightning damage to someone, uh, you can push them back an additional 10 feet. When you can also gain a lightning styled divine strike. This one, honestly, I like the most out of this uh, specialization, which is why one of my, uh, I believe, one of my. Clerics for Adventures League uses this. Uh, however, I haven't used her yet, so I can change it to whatever I want. You gain a flying speed when you are not underground or indoors. So essentially, if you're not standing uh, inside the castle and just out on the uh, terrace, you can fly around. Now, as a channel divinity ability... If you're casting, say, Lightning Strike, you deal maximum possible damage with that Lightning Strike. The Trickery Domain. Now, in 3.5, there was... This wasn't really a thing. You don't get one uh, special... You don't get one domain that you can only class, cast spells with. Back in 3.5, you actually got to pick two specializations, sorry, two spell domains, and tr I literally found the closest way I could come to being a rogue while at the same time being a cleric. I figured this out by being a cleric of Old Admar, however, off topic, really off topic. However, kind of on topic, anyways. Uh, the trickery domain is essentially kind of like your rogues or the bards when they're acting all sneaky and con artists like you give a creature other than yourself advantage on deck saves for one minute you can also turn your plus two longsword into a plus two longsword with poison damage just an example 
And also as a channel divinity spell, sorry, channel divinity, you create one and eventually four duplicates of yourself that are all illusions for one minute or you lose concentration. However, when you, all four of you can move up to 30 feet within 120 feet of yourself and when you cast spells with the other care with the duplicate you essentially both do it and uh, get advantage to hit if it's one of those uh, however and also you can impose advantage when trying to hit the enemy by both of you by at least two of you required to come up to strike him and yes, I do mean two of you must be coming up at him. Uh, and that's all the requirements for that one. Or you can choose to become invisible for a duration as long as you want unless you attack someone or cast a spell. And this includes healing spells. Finally, the style that you might have gotten confused with involving Tempest Domain. The War Domain. This one is a major fun one to play, however. You gain proficiency in heavy and martial weapons. You gain a you are able to attack as a bonus action. And when you swing with your sword, you can choose to deal an extra extra damage equal to, I believe it's like a D8 at the very beginning. That is the same type as your attacking weapon. So if you're wielding a flame tongue, you can choose to either make it a slashing damage or make it, uh, what is it? Flaming damage. There we go. Why did I think that? Why was I forgetting that? Anyways, you also eventually gain resistance to non-magical bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. Yes, this sounds like the Barbarian's ability whenever he's raging. However, it lasts longer because it's 24-7. Now, you can channel Divinity ability and give yourself a plus 10 to hit with your own attack or give another ally the same ability. Stepping into Xanathar's Guide to Everything now. You gain proficiency in heavy armor and one specific set of smithing tools. Now, yes, there are different types of smithing tools. There are brewmasters, uh, forgers, there are alchemists, so on and so forth. You can make a set of non-magical armor or a weapon into a plus one for a small amount of time, which I believe is like one day and every day you have to repeat the ritual. As a channel divinity ability, in a matter of one hour, you can make a non-magical, specifically metal, no, you can't make a leather item, worth no more than 100 gold pieces and no longer than five feet on one side. Eventually, you, gain, you are immune to fire. However, first you have to step up to uh, resistance to fire. And also you gain a plus one EC while you're inside that heavy armor. You also have resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage from non-magical weapons while in heavy armor. And also, unlike some of your other abilities from the other classes, once per turn, you can deal an extra D8 of fire damage. The Grave Domain. Now, this one, as you can tell, took up a lot more info, so I had to make a lot more space for it. Now, when you're bringing someone up from zero hit points, you can bring, you can use the maximum amount of hit points. So, if they're at like three hit points, you can't use this ability. However, so they need to be at exactly zero. Luckily, in D&D 5th Edition, there is no negative numbers. 
So there's no negative one, sorry, negative one, negative two, negative three, none of that in this game. There's only uh, zeros. Now, you can cast Spare the Dying as a bonus action now at a range of 30 feet. You can detect all undead around you within 60 feet that are not in total cover and also not protected from divination spells. And you can use this ability equal to your wisdom modifier per day. Channel Divinity. When you can target one creature that you can see within 30 feet, when it is hit by anything, it re receives vulnerability to all damage from that one enemy that's hitting it immediately. An ally who receives a critical within 30 feet of you is that damage that the enemy is dealing with that critical is turned into a normal hit with no effects from it being a crit. And you can use this equal to your wisdom modifier times per day. You can also add your wisdom modifier to damaging cantrips, much like some of the other ones from the player's handbook. And when you send an age, and also you can send HP from an enemy who was just killed equal to its hit dice. So if this is, say, a goblin, you can take one hit dice from an enemy and put it into an ally. However, it's only one hit point. Now, from the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, the only other book that has any specializations in it for that I've seen as far as right now, or at least that are AL legal, you gain proficiency in Arcana, and two wizard cantrips are added to your spell list. Now, Channel Divinity, you can turn one Celestial, Elemental, Fae, or Fiend for one minute, or until it takes damage because the Barbarian was an idiot and decided to swing its sword at it as it was running by and managed to hit. And at a certain CR, these monsters can be banished away instead. And it starts off really low with like a quarter, and it slowly builds up. Now, when you heal someone with more than a can trip so meaning first level or higher you remove a spell that is casted on the player so for example if the player is has been casted upon him bane or curse you remove the bane or curse from that character now you can add your wisdom modifier once again to damage dealing cantrips and eventually you get to add or spells from the wizard's spell list to your cleric spell list. However, these four spells must be one sixth, one seventh, one eighth, and one ninth spell. One ninth level spells. So you have to pick from the sixth level spell list one of those. From the seventh level spell list, you pick one of those. From the eighth level spell list, you pick one of those. And from the ninth level spell list, you pick one of those. All right, so what should you play? What group of players are you playing with? Uh, how can you help these idiots? Um, uh, I mean, players <laughs> uh, the most. How can you, what can you do to keep the players alive the most? Do they really need that healing guy or do they have that pretty much solved by the next class I'm going to do, which is called the Druids? Or are they... Or possibly, do they just need, are they a bunch of pansy spellcasters, and they need someone who can actually deal damage? So you bring in a war clerk instead. Now, however, also, these guys don't really step on DM's toes, per se. Like, they keep uh, the party going and keep him alive. So how little toes can you step on? I'll ask, I probably asked that twice now. Okay, now please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And hey, if you want to share my terrible, awful, no good videos, go ahead and share them. I don't care. I'm an open book. Thank you for watching. 
Have a wonderful day, and please remember to always game safely. Adios.